today we're optimizing the Ryzen 7 9800X 3D using PBO2 to bring down temps without sacrificing performance. My name is Chris and welcome to the channel. The 9800X 3D is an 8-core, 16-thread processor using AMD's latest L3 cache. While it excels in gaming, it does push low-profile coolers to their limits, making thermal optimization crucial. This chip has a TDP of 120 watts but can draw up to 145 under full core workloads, demanding a competent cooling solution. For this test build, we're pairing the 9800X3D with the ASUS Strix X670EI. Memory is handled by the 64 gigs of RipJaws DDR5 6400 mega transfer kit. Utilizing the Deepcool AN600, a 67 mm low profile cooler upgraded with a Noctua NF A12 15 mm Chromax fan for acquiring a profile. Powering the system is a 750 watt ASUS ROG low key SFX power supply. Alongside the 9800X3D, we have the RTX 5080 Founds Edition, the perfect pair for entry level 4K gaming and AAA titles. Two Fantex T30 fans set to exhaust. All of this wrapped in a pretty bow inside the Form T1. We start with 74 degrees in Cyberpunk 2077, and by the end of this, we'll be sitting at 64 degrees, all while keeping nearly the same FPS in gaming and actually improving multi-core performance. We're doing it entirely in the BIOS with just three simple tweaks. The first and most effective step is Curve Optimizer. This feature dramatically undervolts the CPU, reducing power draw while maintaining high clock speeds. Every CPU has different silicon quality, meaning some chips may handle more aggressive offsets while some may crash at the same settings. A good starting point is negative 40 on all cores, but stability varies. If your system becomes unstable, gradually reduce the negative offset until you find the best balance between efficiency and reliability. Head to the Curve Optimizer menu inside the PBO2 menu. Set negative 25 on all cores or adjust based on stability. Save and reboot. In addition to the negative 25 offset, we cap the CPU's power draw using package power tracking or PPT. By default, the 9800X3D pulls 145 watts in an all-core workload. That's a bit much for small coolers, so we set the PPT to 120 watts, which limits max power draw while keeping performance high. Lastly, we throw a hard temperature limit into the mix. Instead of letting the CPU aim for 95 or 96 degrees by default, we tell it you're stopping at 85, no exception. We tested these settings across a suite of games and applications, including Cyberpunk 2077, Black Myth Wukong, and Cinebench R24. Setting the baseline with stock settings and Cyberpunk 2077 4K with no DLSS or frame generation, we see the CPU hit 74 degrees, drawing 77 watts at 74 frames per second. With the negative curve optimizer, temps drop by 10 degrees to 64 degrees power draw reduced to 60 watts and frames stay nearly identical at 73 frames per second. Adding the power and thermal throttle limit had basically no effect. In Cyberpunk 2077 4T40p, the stock settings hit 82 degrees Celsius while pulling 102 watts reaching 156 frames. The curve optimizer alone brought temps down to 67 degrees, power to 80 watts, and FPS slightly increased to 157. Applying the 120 watt power limit caused the minor temperature increase to 71 degrees with a power draw at 84 watts, and frames per second dipped slightly to 149. 85 degree thermal throttle limit stabilized temperatures at 70 degrees, keeping FPS at 154. In Black Myth Wukong 4K Cinematic, the stock settings, the CPU set at 64 degrees, pulling 63 watts, hitting 74 frames per second. Applying the curve optimizer reduced temperatures to 58 degrees, power to 57, and frames per second unchanged at 73. The power limit shaved down 1 degree, bringing power down to 51 watts, and FPS remained locked. The thermal throttle limit had no effect. In Black Myth Wukong 1440p, stock temps are around 60 degrees with 62 watts from the socket and 88 frames per second. With a negative 25 offset, thermals improved by 8 degrees with an equally impressive decrease in power at 52 watts, all while maintaining the same FPS at 88. With the power limit, thermals increased slightly by 4 degrees, however, power remains the same with a minor performance hit. 
the 85 degree limit in this scenario is basically useless. In Cinebench R24, stock ran at 96 degrees, consuming 131 watts and spiked as high as 145 and scored 1,254 points. The Curb Optimizer improved efficiency slightly, dropping temperatures by 1 degree and power up by 1 watt, but increased performance to 1,323 points. With the 120 watt power limit, thermals dropped to 88 degrees, power was capped at 120 watts of course, but score dipped slightly to 1,300 points. Finally, the 85 degree thermal throttle limit reduced power to 115 watts and performance slightly improved to 1,307 points. So what are the takeaways? Curb Optimizer is the biggest win. Temperatures drop 10 degrees with zero performance loss. The power limit further lowers heat in Cinebench R24 without a major hit to performance. The thermal limit keeps the CPU cool but has diminishing returns in gaming. By tweaking just a few BIOS settings, we took the 9800X3 from 74 degrees to 64 degrees in Cyberpunk, dropping power usage and even boosting multi-core performance. In small form factor setups, these tweaks are a much tried. Even in larger systems, they can offer better efficiency and a peace of mind with lower thermals. To be clear, this video is for those who aren't very savvy and undervolting or overclocking, and you just want to get the best out of your CPU. The power limit shows great promise in Cinebench R24 with a multi-core workload. The thermal throttle limit does keep things somewhat cool, but it does have diminishing returns in gaming. So this is a great CPU, and I would recommend you try these steps if you want to see the best performance and efficiency. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you find what I do very helpful. Again, I'm Chris, and thank you for watching.